welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Central Europe. I hope everybody is having a fantastic week so far. Hi, Anna. Nice to see our members. Hi, Marjona. Hi, Srijana. Good to see everyone. I'm doing fantastic today, Marjona. Thank you for asking. In this class, we are looking at IELTS listening. Specifically, we are looking to see what to do for that band nine performance, and we will be focusing on part one and part two tips, and we're doing practice for part one and part two using our listening exam from our websites. That's right. Wahrat, here we go. This lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there. For general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. That's generalieltshelp.com. On both of those websites, we have six original uh, practice exams, of course, with full listening, transcripts, explanations. We also have interactive courses. We are world leaders when it comes to online IELTS preparation. This is our academic website here at aehelp.com. With the blue background, you can click that big red button to join our premium package. For the general IELTS, it's the green background. Again, you can click that big red button to join the premium package. We are an official British Council IELTS test registration center in Saudi Arabia. So if you're in Saudi Arabia, KSA, you can contact us to register. And we are accredited British Council agents as well. So if you have questions, let us know. Okay, everyone, uh, just a real quick reminder as we get going here, I will darken up the screen just slightly so you can see this a little bit uh, clearer. Um, we have uh, some new Instagram accounts that you can check out. Uh, this is our Instagram account, uh, IELTS underscore AE help. We already have 190 followers and we're following some people as well. We have seven posts. Every day we are putting up vocabulary for the IELTS exam and we're also uploading IELTS videos as you can see here in our stories. So check that out. And of course we have a general IELTS uh, Instagram account as well. I will show you where to go in a moment. And uh, some other exciting news. Uh, when you're practicing speaking, we have our point of view um, sample speaking interview with Brendan from Vietnam. This is brand new material with Brendan uh, for part one. It's a band nine speaking example. You can practice with me in the beginning and then you can compare yourself to Brendan who does the same or answers the same question. So check out that speaking uh, um, interview after the class and uh, make sure to use it. It's lots of fun. It's great for studying. Juan Arturo says, I watched this interview. Juan, did you like it? Was it good? What do you think? So, so give us your feedback. We love hearing from our students. We love to improve and we love to incorporate what you tell us. Okay, everyone, let's get back into today's uh, lesson. So yeah, Juan, I'm curious. You can always email us if you don't want to share in the class, but just let me know how you felt about it. Okay. Nada says, I saw it too. Did you like it, Nada? Okay. Nada says, it gave me a wide range of vocabulary. That's good, Nada. Make sure to practice and use those. Okay, everyone. Uh, promoting our Instagram accounts. Use the code INSTA25 for a 25% discount on our websites, aehelp.com and glshelp.com for those premium packages. If you have any questions, just let me know. I will happily answer adrian at aehelp.com. That's where you can contact me. So we have listening part one and two right now. Tomorrow we will do part two and three as well as a task one academic writing with members. And then on uh, Saturday we'll have a question and answer session and a speaking part three. So lots more lessons uh, coming up. All right, Carolina, I'm glad you liked the video. Fantastic. Okay, uh, so uh, here we go, students, today listening, and we are looking at our test number one. This is actually our second exam 
in our first book, okay? Uh, and um, we will go ahead and listen to part one here. Uh, and uh, you shall answer while you listen, as it usually is in the IELTS. Now, um, when you're answering, uh, please do not put your answers into the answer or into the chat, uh, but put your answers on a separate sheet so that we can um, look at them after and so that everybody has a chance to answer on their own. I'm just going to hop into our My Student account here for the audio. In the My Student account on our web page, we have lots and lots of videos and audios. Uh, this is our second exam, so it will be CD2 uh, track. Two. I know it's quite bright for you right now, so my apologies for that. Um, again, um, turn up the volume, use a headset if you must, all right? Uh, that might help. I'm using my uh, microphone and a nice little Bose speaker for this. So uh, here we go with uh, listening section of the IELTS part one practice, and then we will go through the answers and talk strategy after. All right, everyone. This recording is copyrighted by Two Think One Solutions Inc. and World ESL Tutors. You will hear several different recordings and you will answer questions on what you hear. There will be time given to read the instructions and questions and you will be given a chance to check your work. The recordings will be played only once. The test is made up of four sections. At the end of the test, you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Listening section one. You will hear a conversation between two men as one of the men buys a gym membership. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example. This time only, the conversation relating to this question will be played. Good afternoon. I'm interested in purchasing a gym membership. Of course, sir. What length of membership are you looking for? We have options ranging from one month to two years. Can I get one for three months? I don't want to make too much of a commitment. Of course. The man says he wants a three month membership. So this answer has been indicated for you. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Good afternoon. I'm interested in purchasing a gym membership. Of course, sir. What length of membership are you looking for? We have options ranging from one month to two years. Can I get one for three months? I don't want to make too much of a commitment. Of course. Before we can get you started on getting into shape, I'm going to need some personal details from you. Certainly. Let's start with your name. William Bacon. Bacon spelled the same as the breakfast food? Yes. B-A-C-O-N. OK, William. Now I need your residential address. Oh, please call me Bill. I feel odd being called William. OK, Bill. So your address then. Right. I live at 1653 Spoonar Street in Liverpool. Oh, I know that street. My grandmother lived there when I was growing up. The street name is spelled with an A, is it not? Yes, that's right. Spoonar is spelled S-P-O-O-N-A-R. And your postcode here in Liverpool? PK387YQ. TK38? 7YQ? No, PK387YQ. Right. Now we need your date of birth. April 9th, 1980. And your telephone numbers, starting with your home number. 
I don't have a home number, just a mobile number. It is 312 77 8391. Fine then. Now, do you have any medical issues we should know about, such as asthma? I have no medical concerns. I'm in perfect health as far as I know. Now, I need to ask you a few questions to find out what type of gym membership fits your lifestyle the best. There is more than one type of gym membership? Oh yes, there are a number of different options. We have our most basic membership, which allows you to work out on the machines on the main floor of our town centre facility. Then there is our premium membership, which allows members usage of the machines on the second floor of our town centre facility, as well as access to our third floor lounge. What is so special about the machines on the second floor? Nothing really, but our gym is extremely busy and often the machines on the second floor are the only ones available. However, as I said, they are only open to the premium members. Tell me about the lounge. Our lounge is fantastic. The room is big, about 50 feet by 50 feet, and we have two large televisions and many comfortable chairs. There is also a full bar service and a complimentary snack bar. You now have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 6 to 10. That sounds great. Are there any other membership options? Yes, there is one more. We call it the Premium Plus membership, and it allows customers to use any of our gym facilities in the country. So if I go to London or Kent or Newcastle, can I use your gyms there? Well, yes, but we don't currently operate a gym in Newcastle. We do, however, operate a total of 22 gyms in England, not including this one in Liverpool. 23 gyms, that's impressive. What is the price difference between these memberships? Well, at your three month level, the basic membership is 53 pounds. The premium is 84 pounds and the premium plus is 95 pounds. That's quite a step up from basic to premium. Yes, but it's quite good value for the additional services and location options. I'll have to think this over a bit before I make a decision. Just so you know, Bill, we are running a promotion right now if you sign up another person along with yourself, we will give both of you premium memberships for the price of basic memberships. Wow, that's a great deal. I wonder who I should ask to join with me. Greg loves to work out, but he's already has a gym membership. I could ask Steve, but he's so busy with work all the time. I think I will ask my neighbour Kate. She's been trying to get back into shape after having her baby last autumn. Wonderful. I will see you soon then. Yes, you will. Sorry. I didn't catch your name. It's Mike, and it was a pleasure helping you. I will hopefully be in tomorrow with Kate. Does 11 work? No, sorry, I'm not in until midday. I will see you midday then. That is the end of section one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. During this time, this half minute, always check your answers. Look for spelling mistakes. Also look for maybe mistakes when reading the instructions in the question. So uh, you will have time to review uh, part two after. So don't worry about that. Okay, everyone. So uh, just a note, uh, there is no example now anymore in the aisle since 2020. So don't expect that. We'll go a little bit brighter here so you can see me for these first few questions. Uh, so there's no example. Now, um, at the beginning, uh, you saw that I was uh, scrolling up and down. So I was moving through the exam. You're allowed to do that. There's no rule that says you cannot look at other parts of the listening section. So what I was doing there is I was looking for the topics of part two. Okay, so I was looking at part two topic. I was looking at the part three topic and it's called part one, part two, part three, part four, because I know that part two, part three and uh, part four 
are going to be more challenging. Uh, so I want to start getting an idea uh, about these topics so that my brain can at least subconsciously um, get a little bit more information on these topics. Um, so did anybody catch the topics for part two, part three, part four? What did you think uh, you will be listening to in those parts? This can really help you pick up uh, some extra scores. So Surya says, part two looked like it was something about provinces. Vaishnavi says, I think it was more specifically about Calgary. So yeah, maybe provinces of Canada, right? Definitely something about Canada and uh, maybe Calgary. Okay, very good. Yeah, I looked at a couple multiple choice questions that definitely showed some information about Calgary. All right, um, what was part three? about so i kind of checked part four and then i went back um, and uh, checked part three as well um, so what was part three about okay surya says part three was something about a student meeting a professor student and professor yeah sure so that looks to be correct absolutely and then i went to part four and part four about the was yet yeah, nick hill tyrannosaurus rex or more simply put t-rex okay that was very clear so i took a peek at these i let my brain kind of take a snapshot of these topics and i let my subconscious start working on this information that's very effective because in the IELTS, you're answering while you're listening. So letting your brain get a head start, it's called a head start on the information, uh, is a very good idea. Okay, everybody clear on that? Thumbs up, yeah. Let your brain get a head start on the part two, part three, part four topics. Most students have no problem to check these. Uh, sometimes I heard students said, oh, my examiner or proctor said, Please don't turn the pages, but most students have no problem to do this. And a lot of students have said to us that, yeah, that really helped me. Um, it, the topic didn't surprise me as much uh, once I got there. Okay. All right. So I see that many people are giving thumbs up and hearts and smiley faces. Lots of good emojis there. So fantastic. Okay. So that's what we're preparing for uh, later to, in this class, this these pro the province calgary and then for tomorrow's part three part four you know that it's going to be uh some kind of a student professor conversation and uh something about dinosaurs and t-rex okay good all right devanch laryant carolina good all right fantastic so it wasn't just some crazy uh scrolling and moving around it was purposeful okay so everything in ielts with purpose your strategy is with purpose okay so then we went back to part one and we heard this information uh, this is a filling in the form part one uh, demographic information so name phone number postcode uh, credit card number these are very common kinds of questions for part one so be prepared for these uh, name what was the name of this person registering for uh, the gym membership Okay, what was the full name? It was William something. All you had to be was a little bit patient. In part one, they usually repeat and then say it. Uh, Sunder, be careful with your spelling. They spelled the name twice. It's William Bacon. You can write all capital like this. It's just slower and uh, it's easier to make spelling mistakes. Um, so if you're going to write all capital, I suggest writing lowercase in the paper-based exam. Uh, so for the paper-based exam, write lowercase, and then when you transfer your answer, transfer it in capital letters, just make sure that it's correct. Everybody catch that. So you can write in your question paper, you can write bacon, okay? This would be wrong because the name is with a big B, but in the 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet, you can make it all capital. Um, just be really careful with spelling. 
Uh, make sure you don't change the spelling when you do that, okay? The reason for that logic is it's faster to write lowercase, and usually people make less spelling mistakes with lowercase, okay? Because it's less lines. It's faster, okay? Saren says, you got it. Rashika says, okay, all right? So you can practice that at home. All right, so the address was next. Uh, Mr. William Bacon lives at 1653 something street. What street? I think the administrator says, yeah, I know that street. My grandmother lived there. Um, so what was the street? Radhika says, yeah, I totally agree. Okay, all right, Spoonar. Yeah, so again, it has to be a big S no matter what you do, okay? Uh, Spoonar Street, S-P-O-O-N, like, uh, you know, spoon, right? Like a spoon, okay? Um, and it's Spoonar, S-P-O-O-N-A-R, Spoonar. Very good. Okay, lots of you got that. Fantastic. Names are what's called proper nouns. Know your proper nouns. Make sure to capitalize them, okay? Okay. Okay, uh, the city is Liverpool. What's the postal code for this gentleman? So what was his postal code? Okay. PK387YQ. PK387YQ is, I believe, correct. PK387YQ. Uh, uh, when you are writing postal codes, credit card numbers, make sure it's really clear. I highly recommend using capital letters for the letters, okay, not lowercase. It doesn't matter. I mean, you could write it as PK38. Okay, uh, but it's clear with capital letters. Okay, it's clear with capital letters. All right. Okay, um, date of birth, April 9th, uh, 1980. Good. Um, residential number. Residential number was his residential phone number for number four. Um, what was his residential phone number? So it's a little bit of a tricky one because he gives an interesting answer. Okay. Yeah, so Jagannathan says uh, no number. Yeah, so no number or none. Okay, uh, let's check how many words you're allowed. It says uh, complete the form below. It doesn't say how many words. Um, so no number or none would be correct. Yeah, so if you wrote none or no number, that's correct. Uh, none is just a common noun, so you can write it all lowercase. N-O-N-E, okay, none. Non-number is strange. I don't think they would mark that correct. Okay, so careful. It's no number. Non-number is weird. Okay, that wouldn't be acceptable. So uh, if you write no, so residential number no. Yeah, I think they'll give you that for no. Um, I sometimes uh, in my forms, I write this. I write N-A, which means not applicable. Okay. Uh, that would be correct as well. That's recognized as uh, a, f a way to write f um, answers on a form in English. Okay, this means not applicable. Okay, N slash A, not applicable. So um, any makes sense. Okay, you can use that on your forms for when you're filling out official forms like visa applications. There's a question that's not applicable to you, and you can write N-A. Okay, I'll darken up the screen here a little bit so this is a bit clearer. This was a, an identifying the diagram type question. Here they were talking about the lounge at the gym. Um, which one was the correct answer? A, B, C, or D? What does the lounge on the third floor look like? Yeah, Sammy, Lachika, LePay, very good. Yeah, it was A. Uh, what was the information? What two pieces of information gave us this correct answer? Very good, Devansh. Very good, Carolina Nikhil. Yeah, so A it was. Um, what gave us this information? 
What gave it away? What let us know that it was A? Uh, so Raj says that 50 by 50. Yeah, so 50 by 50 means it can't be B, it can't be D. It can be A or C. So 50 by 50. This is 50 by 50. This is 50 by 50. And yeah, very good, Daniel Klipov. Daniel Klipov says, and also because of the chairs, many chairs, right? Those are the chairs we assume. Here there's only one chair. So, yeah, thankfully there are many chairs, comf many comfortable chairs. Yeah, good. Okay, so be ready for that kind of uh, question. Okay, they like these diagram type of questions on the IELTS as well. Okay, cool. Um, let's uh, brighten up our lives here a little bit for the second half. Okay, uh, so the next question was uh, about the membership types. There are three types of memberships. You have uh, one, which is the basic. Okay, basic was access to the main floor. Um, B, here uh, for the question six, so in your answer sheet, it would look like this. Okay, and you'd have question six. And what you have to do is you have to put the letter B and then you have to put the correct number. And then you put a comma, you put C, and then you put the correct number. Okay? So Surya says it's B1, C2. Premium membership gives you access to the lounge. Yes, it does. And access to facilities around England. The premium plus membership. That's correct. So the way to do this is B1, C2. Uh, do not just write one and two, okay? So if you write just one, two, you can get that wrong, all right? So be very clear when you're giving your answers. B1, C2, okay? Lots of different question types in the IELTS listening, so be ready for that. Always check your logic. Make sure it's clear for the examiner. Um, when you're transferring your answers to the answer sheet, uh, think about, okay, if I'm the examiner, is my answer clear? Uh, do I clearly see this answer, what it means? Okay. So everybody got that? Okay, one more time. I'm just going to make a quick note on that. Okay. So... During the 10-minute... Time to transfer answers to the answer sheet um, or in the five minutes uh, review time in the computer uh, based exam. Check to make sure that your answers are clear for the examiner and match the answer criteria, like one or two words, okay? So think about it like if I'm the examiner, is this clear for me? Uh, one and two, does that, is it clear which one is which, okay? So think about that, okay? All right, um, so here we go. Uh, question, Seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, these were short answers. Uh, write no more than two words, so two words maximum. Okay, uh, number seven. How many gyms does the company operate in England? This is obviously a total number here. Uh, Sandipya Dub says uh, it's 23. Okay, yeah, it is. So it's 23 uh, gyms total. The man says 22, uh, not including this one. So it's 23. Uh, what is the cost of the premium membership? So how much does it cost for the second level, the premium? Good luck, Bijay. I hope you uh, get a great result. All right. Uh, Carolina says 23 gyms. Yeah, um, 23. You don't have to write gyms. I mean, if you really want, you can, but you don't need to uh, because it's in here. 
okay? Two words, you could. Uh, there's no chance to make a spelling mistake because you can just copy that word, but it's not necessary, okay? All right, for number eight, it's 84 pounds. Again, you don't need pounds because it's given, okay? So it's just 84. All right, number nine, who is Bill going to ask to join him at the gym? So Bill's thinking maybe Steve, but Steve's busy at work. He thinks about another friend. And then he eventually thinks, okay, I'm going to ask this person who does, okay, Lachika says Kate with a capital K. It's a name. Make that a very clear big K. Uh, Kate, the neighbor. Yeah, Kate. Uh, Kate is easier to write than neighbor. If you write neighbor, that's okay. <laughs> or neighbor Kate or Kate, the neighbor. Uh, that would be three words, so careful. Neighbor Kate. Uh, Sakti is okay. Um, but uh, Kate is enough, specific. Uh, what time is Bill meeting Mike the following day? There's a couple ways you can answer this. So they discuss that they will meet the next day. And uh, Bill's going to bring Kate so that they can all get a discount. Sammy says midday. Very good. Midday, one word. Mid, like middle, day, put together, midday. Okay. Uh, common noun, no need to capitalize it. Midday. Uh, we don't capitalize nouns uh, for. We capitalize nouns for time, like Monday or February, but we don't capitalize for afternoon or tomorrow or noon or midday. It's kind of weird. After the, the day, <laughs> then we capitalize, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but not for uh, tomorrow or yesterday or midday. Those are all small letters, okay? So careful with that. Okay, everyone. We're going to get into... Uh, Speaking part two. Oh, uh, before I play the audio for speaking part two, just a quick question. Uh, what was your score out of 10? So how many did you get correct uh, from 10? In part one, your goal should be uh, nine or higher. So between nine and 10, basically. That should be your goal because Part two, part three, part four, they're going to be much more difficult. Uh, Surya, um, if you write 12, you have to write 12 p.m. So if you write 12 for that question, you have to include p.m. like that. If there's no p.m., it could be noon or midnight. So be really careful, okay? Uh, midday is 12 p.m., all right? Careful with that. Okay, Rivashta Nishia says eight. Eight is okay. Tommy says eight. It's not bad. Devanch, seven. It's on the low end. Bharat, six. You definitely want to pull that up a bit. Okay, so nine, ten. That's what you're aiming for in part one. Um, because uh, part two, three, four, they're more challenging. You stand to lose more marks. Okay, everyone, here we go uh, with the next part. Again, just a reminder uh, don't put your answers in the chat share them after that way you don't confuse other students okay so uh, let's get into it i'm just going to darken up our screen here a touch so you can see this brighter question that's coming up here we go um, and again turn up the volume use a headset it might be a little bit better uh, and uh, let's just jump back to our website okay everyone here we go with part two get ready Take some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Listening section 2. You will hear a recording of a travel show about tourism to Calgary, Canada. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen carefully to the interview and answer questions 11 to 16. Hello, I'm Deborah Sloan and welcome to Hotspots, the travel show that highlights great tourist spots around the world. Today we have a representative from Calgary, Canada, who is going to tell us a little about the city. Thanks, Deborah. 
Yes, my name is Robert, and I'm going to tell you all about the wonderful city of Calgary. Sorry, I hate to interrupt, Robert, but can you tell me exactly where Calgary is? I'm sure many of our viewers are wondering. Sure. Calgary is the largest city in the province of Alberta, which is the second most western province in Canada. Alberta lies directly east of the province of British Columbia, of which Vancouver is a very well-known tourist destination, and directly west of the province of Saskatchewan, of which Regina is the capital. Canada is a very big place, and that is shown by just how far Calgary is from many of the other major Canadian cities. Calgary is over 1,000 kilometres from Vancouver, and over 3,400 kilometres from Toronto, Canada's largest city. Canada is definitely a very spacious country. Yes, indeed. Well, let me tell you a little about Calgary. Calgary is a beautiful city of approximately one million people, situated next to the Rocky Mountains. It is known most, perhaps, for the world-famous Calgary Stampede. Is that with the cowboys and bull riding? Yes, and it's held every July in the city. The Stampede attracts more than a million visitors each year from all over the world. It is referred to as the greatest outdoor show on earth. Another fact that Calgary is well known for is oil, which was first discovered in the area in 1902. With the boom in oil prices over the past 40 years, Calgary has seen its population grow from 400,000 in 1971 to over 1 million in 2007. In that time period, Calgary was by far the fastest growing city in Canada. Many sports fans will know that Calgary was host to the 1988 Winter Olympics, and to this day, Calgary remains a winter activity destination, with several world-class facilities dedicated to many winter sports, from bobsled to curling to speed skating and everything in between. One of Calgary's biggest icons is its hockey team, the Calgary Flames, who play in the National Hockey League, or NHL as it's better known. Well, they have been one of the more successful teams in the league during their 30 years in Calgary, even winning the coveted Stanley Cup in 1989. You now have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 17 to 20. On the cultural side of things, Calgary boasts a number of festivals during the year, including a fringe festival, a comedy festival, as well as the Calgary International Film Festival. Calgary is also home to numerous theatre companies, as well as the Calgary Opera, Alberta Ballet, and the Calgary Philharmonic Orchestra. Sorry to interrupt again, Robert. But this programme is called Hotspots. So what's the weather like in Calgary? I've heard it's cold. Yes, in the winter it can be quite cold, but in the summer it is also quite warm, with average summer high temperatures hovering around 23 degrees Celsius, while average winter high temperatures are around minus 2 degrees and routinely go down to minus 20. Calgary experiences something quite unique when it comes to the weather. It has these weather fronts called Chinook winds, which can blow through the city in the winter and temporarily raise the temperature by up to 15 degrees Celsius. These Chinook winds can last anywhere from a few hours to a few days, and they are welcomed with open arms by the people of Calgary. Calgary is also one of the sunniest cities in Canada, as well as one of the driest, which makes up for a lot of the cold weather. Honestly, though, if you're looking for a winter getaway to a hot spot, as you say, Calgary is not the place to go. But if you are looking for a winter getaway that includes skiing or snowboarding or anything else done best in the cold weather, nobody does it better than Calgary. Thank you, Robert, for that fascinating look at Calgary. That is the end of section two. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. And again, use that half minute, students, to check your answers. All right, let's go through the answers now together and uh, just going to hop back to the beginning here, this first question, so we can clearly see this, then I'll brighten up our lives. Uh, this was a little bit of a tricky question. You had to really pay attention to prepositions like to and from. Okay, uh, so what are the two provinces directly west 
and directly east of the province of Alberta. Now, of course, it helps to know the uh, geography of Canada a little bit. Uh, match the diagram with the choices below. So this would be for question 11. This would be for question 12. So question 11 uh, in the west. So west of Alberta, um, what province do we find west of Alberta? It was a little bit tricky because the speaker kind of says it in the opposite uh, way. Okay, Daniel says 11 is D, and Daniel, you're correct. It's British Columbia, and I'm definitely sure because that's where I live, in British Columbia, Victoria, the capital city. So, um, yeah, 11 is D, and what is 12? 12 was... B. So 12 was B. 12 was Saskatchewan. It's British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan. Next to Saskatchewan is Manitoba. Next to Manitoba is Ontario. Next to Ontario up here is Quebec. Okay. So just a quick uh, heads up. Those are the big provinces. You should know those. British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, Quebec, and then we have New Brunswick, Newfoundland, Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, and to the north we have none of it. Northwest Territories and north of BC is Yukon, and then up here is Alaska. Okay, those make up big part of the land on Earth, those pieces. So it's good to know. All right. Okay, so. D and B, number 11, D, number 12, B. Okay, for this type of question, it's a good idea to take some notes while you're listening. One million people is the number used to describe two groups in the recording. Which of these two groups does it describe? Population of Alberta, population of British Columbia, population of Calgary, number of visitors to the Calgary Stampede. So for this question, it's 1314. The order doesn't matter. You just have to make the right choices. And I can now brighten up our lives a little bit. You can see this a little bit brighter. There we are. Okay, Sundeep says 13 C and D. That's right. Yeah, C and D. So Calgary has a summertime festival, of course, probably not during COVID, um, where they double their population, the Calgary Stampede. All right, so 1314, population of Calgary, visitors to the Calgary Stampede. Very good. Okay, C and D, good job, everyone. Okay, uh, number 15, which industry is Calgary well known for? Wheat, oil, natural gas, although in the last few years, this industry has declined, um, but they're well known for B, that's right, for oil. Okay, Calgary and Alberta produce oil. Very good. So number 15 was B. Number 16, uh, which of these events did Calgary host? Winter Olympics, Expo 88, or the Stanley Cup? A, B, or C? Sakti says it's B. Bhutir Roshan agree. Yeah. Bonus question. Let's see how well you know Canada. Which two other cities in Canada have hosted the Winter Olympics. This is a question because I'm Canadian <laughs> and I like to spread a little bit of Canadian trivia knowledge. Anybody know what other two cities in Canada have hosted the Winter Olympics in the past few decades? The, uh, the last one was in 2010, which I went to as well. Hint, hint. Quebec City, no. Montreal, very good, Nada. Montreal was one of them, yeah. Montreal in Quebec, the province. Montreal hosted and in 2010. Where was the uh, Winter Olympics in 2010? It was in Canada. And they say the name of this city in the audio as well. Hint, hint. Very good, Dana. Vancouver. That was an awesome Olympics in Vancouver. Canadian hockey team and curling team winning gold medals. Canada breaking the gold medal record, taking it away from Russia in 2010, winning 16 gold medals in the Winter Olympics. That's the new world record, and that was set by Canada in Vancouver in 
2010. Proud Canadian to say that. So anyway, <laughs> it's just a little bit of trivia knowledge. Okay, uh, let's keep going here. Um, so uh, number 17, average summer highs in Calgary reach how many degrees Celsius? So summer highs, how many degrees uh, Celsius? Anybody got that one? Number 17. 23, very good. Yeah, and you don't need to put Celsius because it's in the question. If it's in the question, it's not needed in the answer. So you just need the number, 23, okay? And if you do write it, make sure to check the spelling. It's a capital C, Celsius, okay? Or you could just keep it simple and put the symbol like that if you really wanted to. Uh, use symbols whenever possible, okay? All right, let's make sure you're using a correct symbol, okay? All right, so here we go. Now the last little part, we had to fill in these spaces. So average winter highs in Calgary reach something two degrees. What's the missing word? This is in winter. So the previous one was summer. Yeah, all you need is minus because you have the word two, so please don't write two, just write minus. Okay, write the word minus two degrees. Uh, Chinook winds can raise the temperature by up to 15 degrees Celsius, you have the word there again, and can last anywhere from a few hours to a few something. So how long can these warm winds last for number 19? Yep, we got minus for the previous, that was good, okay. And what is it for number 19? Days, that's right, days. D-A-Y-S, for a few days. Uh, Calgary is also one of the driest cities in Canada as well as one of the, so it's driest, and what's the last answer for question 20? It is... Let's see who gets it up there first. This is days, it's plural, make sure you have S, okay? Sunniest, very good, Devansh, you're the first, thumbs up. Sunniest, S-U-N-N-I-E-S-T, sunniest, okay, most sunny, sunniest. All right, very good, everyone. So those were the correct answers. Good job, way to hang in there, way to listen through. That's what you want to do in the aisles. Focus, listen, hang in there. Uh, how did you do, everyone? So how, what did you get out of 20? For uh, part one and part two, so part one plus part two, your goal should be 16 or more, okay? So your goal should be 16 or more, all right? Because if you get less than 16, you've still got the hardest, most challenging parts coming up. So LePay, 17 out of 20 is pretty good. Nikhil, 18 is good, okay? Shakazod, 18 is good. Marjona, 16 is acceptable, okay? Surya, 17 is not bad. Don't be uh, down on yourself. Sammy, that's good, okay? Krishna, 15 is very eh, borderline. All right, everyone. So uh, for part three, part four, uh, come back tomorrow at the same time. And we're going to do part three and part four together. Uh, study, practice until then. If it's getting late in your country, then uh, get some rest. Rest your brain, rest your mind. And uh, of course, uh, make sure to follow us on our Instagram accounts that I showed you. And remember, you can use this code on our websites, Insta25, to get a 25% discount on our websites. Uh, where you will find lots more listening practice exams as well as videos with tips, strategies, uh, interactive course, aehelp.com for academic outs, gltshelp.com for general outs. I'll be back tomorrow with part three and part four. Have an awesome rest of your day. Much love to all of you from the heart of Europe. I'm Adrian signing out for now. Bye, everyone.